Hi everyone, this is Claire. Well, I'm a little older now, so people call me Claire on Medicare. I recognize it's a little ridiculous that a woman my age is still trying to do comedy, but you know, I have such an advantage over those younger comics because if I forget my material, I'm adorable. If they forget their material, they look like amateurs. I can feel the shock and awe rolling in because of my new look, right? I hear you say things like sassy, professional, edgy, epic. Oh, I cannot do this to my friends, people that have trusted me. I cannot treat you like a certain political party that knows the truth, sees the truth, and then lies about it. This actually... This is, this is fake news. It's actually a metaphor for a certain president's political decision. I call this my COVID cover-up. It's covering eight months of a lack of access to a beautician. You know, as much as I, I you know, but I, 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 as much as I, I, you know, it is kind of weird. It reminds me of the 70s when I used to have to have my hair all long and it had to like go all the way down to my butt and it had to be straight, right? And, and, and then, but you know what? We didn't even realize that we were such pace setters because we would use, to get our hair straight, we would use um, orange juice concentrate cans and you then use them as hair rollers. Uh, that may not be funny, but it, it is pathetic. But whenever I wanted my hair straight, I just threw my head on a board and ironed it. But then I would get all these burn marks all over my face. It looked like I belonged to some sort of cult group, a self-mutilation cult group, <laughs> a devotee of the great self-mutilation guru, everybody called Cut Cut. There were so many cults. I mean, there were more than the Moonies and the Hare Krishnas. They were popping up everywhere. I mean, to give you an example, I was kneeling before my car changing a tire, and I accidentally started my own religion. It could happen. But I digress. I digress. Let's, let's get back to COVID. All right. COVID is absolutely upending all our social norms. I mean, people are self-quarantined. They've lost their social connection. They're self-isolated. They don't go to work. They watch the prices right. Millennials. Gen Z's, spoiler alert, that's called retirement. You're self-quarantined, you lost your social connections, you're self-isolated, you can't go to work, you watch The prices Right. Well, I, many of you know now I am finally retired, yeah. Yeah, and I also can feel the love zooming in, the appreciation, because I'm a retired teacher, right? But you guys, it took a pandemic for you guys to realize that teachers are American heroes. I mean, parents, when this COVID is over and you return your child back to your teacher, weeping because you are no longer teaching, then, and you feel like you're gonna be having happy days, then you better be standing next to your teacher when she asks for a, uh, asks for a pay raise. Well, you know, I, I was going to try to teach 50 years. I thought it was a cute number, but I did 48. And that's because on my 48th year, I had to retire because they gave me the 5-6 combination class. Putting 5th and 6th graders in the same space is like teaching the innocent and the damned. That's a time when 5th grade girls are abandoning their Barbie dolls and 6th grade boys are recovering them and stuffing them under their beds. Now, for those of you that might have your minds in the gutter, let me assure you, this was a rational decision on the part of the boys because sex education in public school is so bad that in the evening, these boys would pull out the dolls, rip off the clothes, admittedly in a frenzy, just to see the upcoming attractions. Well, you know, I have to admit that I, I ended up going to therapy after this class. I'm sorry, it brings back tears. I had to go to a therapist, and the therapist taught me that I had lost my sense of humor and suggested that I write comedy, but warned me that if I tried to perform it 
and the audience didn't laugh, it would feel like sixth graders bullying you, bullying me. <laughs> ah, I just want to put that out there so you know my mental health is in your hands. But wait a minute, this is virtual. I can imagine all the giggles I want because I literally can not take any more depression. I mean, there's so much depression. You hear people say things like, I can't breathe. Not just out of respect for Black Lives Matter, but because of the masks they're wearing, the homemade masks. And that, did you hear that Jacobia Myers has opened up a whole new legal division to deal with shopping cart collisions, neck and, neck and back injuries? I mean, because when you can't breathe in a, in a shopping, I mean, you're at the Vons, then it fog, fogs up your glasses and that's, that spells disaster. I mean, I heard about an accident yesterday when I was there. On Vons, they yelled out, clean up, aisle 14. I ran over there just like I expected. A bloody mess. Arms and legs and canned goods scattered everywhere. Well, I, I don't want any of you to think that this little fluffy piece of comedy is an excuse for not wearing masks because there is no excuse for not wearing masks. Follow the science. It may seem like an inconvenience to you, but science says that a greater inconvenience is death. Now, when you're my age and um, masks have saved our lives, I mean, we're, we're part of the vulnerable group, but more than saving our lives, masks serve a much more important role. They are the perfect wrinkle remover. I mean, forget Plexiderm. I mean, when you're someone my age, 74 years old, and, and, and your face looks like a festival of prunes and cover girl makeup covers nothing, and I have to use spackle to fill in these crevices, I mean, a mask is like nirvana. You are like so excited. I, I put it on, and all you can see is my baby blues. You know, but it has caused some chaos in certain checkout counters like when I went to the liquor store buying my wine uh, box wine which is what people do in a pandemic and and the, the cashier said let me see your license I went oh my god she thinks I'm under 21 I was so excited I threw the license at her she said this is a fake license I said what she said rip off your mask I have to do a spot check before I give you your senior discount oh my Hi everyone, I'm sorry, a little 70s flashback. We used to like to play with our hair and flip it and everything. I thought I was done yesterday, but I had a COVID event I just have to share with you. Have you ever gone to a market for something urgent and then forget to wear a mask? Well, that happened to me yesterday. I went to Rite Aid for something urgent, my depends, maskless, and I was standing there holding them tight to my chest when I looked up and saw that the rest of the customers looking at me in stunned silence. And I felt bad. I realized inside, I said, oh no, now they know I pee in my pants. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll be tell them a joke. I said, hey, you guys, this is the original, the pens are the original PPE. <laughs> they protect me from you and you from me. And they weren't laughing. In fact, they radicalized. One guy went all Karen on me and grabbed another employee and said, let me speak to your manager. Let me speak to your manager right now. That woman isn't wearing a diaper on her face. And I went, oh no, I don't have a mask on. I was horrified, I was shocked. I ran out of there, dropped my Depends, ran out of there, jumped into my car and raced away. And because I didn't have my Depends, I was forced to kegel all the way home. I am honored to support Congressman Harley Ruda, a leader and visionary, a courageous politician who from the beginning understood the gravity of this pandemic. He continues to demonstrate commitment, courage, and integrity, and the leadership skills needed to resolve our community's economic and health-related challenges caused by this pandemic.